Good day, Chief here. Uh, while I was stateside for my father's funeral and came back to these riots, these riots took place for a couple more months before they finally rested a little bit. And I think that's when the trial and all that happened. Uh, my ex-wife said, the kids want to come visit you in Korea. Is that okay? I go, sure. Now, there was kind of an unwritten rule that family members could come visit us and they could stay in your room. And since I shared a room with a lieutenant, um, the kids basically stayed in my bedroom. We had the uh, kitchen table. My kitchen table was a card table that I had to purchase with two folding chairs because the only furniture they provided for us was what was inside the bedrooms and that was it. I think we had it because we, we had to buy our own dishes, our own uh, pots and pans because there was a cook or a kitchen at the far end. We had a refrigerator. I think maybe a microwave in our room, but everything else as far as the stove and, and an oven was down in this kitchen. Of course, you had to clean it if you used it, but there was no, no cooking utensils down there. So my kids came over, and the riots were still happening every now and then, and <laughs> I wanted to strangle one of my kids. Uh, as I said, there's a bus that takes you to the Incheon Air, Air Base, so I took the bus, went to go pick my kids up, and my youngest son of that marriage is wearing a pair of BDUs cut off. I'm like, son, the wrong, th I know, Dad, I know now. So, yeah, he's in BDUs that are cut off down there at the pocket on the side of the hip. So we get all the way back to the uh, camp, and of course I had to show their IDs plus my ID, and uh, MP looked at me and he says, Chief, I said, he already knows about it, he won't wear them the whole time he's here, and they're like, okay, sir. Uh, so my kids did have fun. Uh, one of them, I think, I think the two of them slept on the bed, or one of them slept on the bed with me, and and the other one slept on the floor. Now, they weren't young. They were junior high and I think high school level. I don't remember exactly which at that time. And uh, actually, no, one was out of high school and the other one was in high school. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So with the rioting, we didn't need to do much because we couldn't get off base because the rioting was even stopping the bus to come to CRC and they didn't want people to go outside the gate to try to get on and off the bus and get back inside the gate. So several days, there was really not much for my kids to do because, you know, CRC was only so big. I mean, they played games. I think I had one of my game systems there and I had my computer so they were able to entertain themselves that way. Uh, we finally did get out and did get to Seoul for a couple days or Two nights, three nights, I don't remember which, at the old Dragon Inn. I don't even know if that still exists. Someone said they sold half of it or that part of the base got sold to the South Korea or, or given back. I've heard stories off and on, so I don't know if the Dragon Inn still exists. Uh, so we spent time there, and of course they got to see all the riot police standing outside there. Because one day we walked, and I took them to the uh, big... Uh, the big uh, electronics market there's a big tower and it's like open air markets all up and down like on six five six seven floors and it's nothing but electronics 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 a lot of guys would go there and get the parts to build their own computers and such so they got to see that occasionally you'll see the dancing girls that are selling this product and they'll hand out the flyers I don't think there was any there the day we went I took them to um, Hooker Hill, as we called it. There's a uh, hill within walking distance of the hotel, and it's nothing. <clears throat> Coffee. It's nothing but bars. So I told them, I said, we're going to walk single file down the middle of the street. Do not, do not walk towards any of the girls when they call you out because they will try to snatch you. I'm not kidding especially when they see young little boys, so to speak. Uh, so, I don't know if they got red-faced or not. The boys did, but we survived. <laughs> and 
And then I also took them up to Camp Casey because Camp Casey was where everybody went to go get the mink blankets. Uh, there was a reasonable guy selling the mink blankets and I can't remember, I think it was paying like 25 bucks a piece for them. So that wasn't bad back in that time. Who knows what they cost now. But then my mother got wind of this. I ended up buying and shipping to her like a dozen blankets. Now, they don't weigh that much per se, but it took me several trips to go up there and get these. And plus, it took me forever to find enough boxes to ship these because I can only put one per box in the mail. And she paid for everything, but I just told her, I said, this was a job. Because so I had to go up to Camp Casey, come back from Camp Casey. I think the max I did was for the first trip. I mean, yeah, they got plastic handles on these nice bags that protect the blankets, but still, that's a weight that just bites into your hand. I know. You're a wimp, chief. No, it just hurts. Uh, so they each picked up one. I think they even picked up one for their girlfriend. So they ended up with taking four of them home. We barely got those four blankets to fit in their suitcase. I think we had to, I think I had to buy a duffel bag and we stuffed a couple of them so they had an extra bag of, to take home because you just can't fold those things tiny. So it was nice to see my sons. I mean, we had a good time. They got to see Korea. Uh, that was about the, uh, later on in my career. I'll have to take my older son, and he'll come to Germany for ninety days because that's the max amount of time he could spend there with me, without uh, having to get a visa, which you'd never get. Uh, people complain about the migrants here. Go to a foreign country. My mother was told by the American authorities when she came over, you get 90 days, but you can fly out, fly back in, and get another 90 days. But America doesn't work that way. You get your visa for the set amount of time, your time's up, you leave, you have to apply again. But over in Germany, all you had to do is be gone for a day, you can come back and get another 90-day visa. At least that's what it was for dependents and of uh, armed forces members. Uh, but they, she, she was warned that you know the authorities would come looking, would come looking for her. I'm going off on tangents today. I guess my mind's just not where it is. Uh, so my kids came over, got them home. Uh, one thing I do want to mention from my father's funeral, and that is, I met one of the members of the five. 307th composite group which is also known by Merle's Marauders. Now we had a memorial service for my father in the Methodist Church where my parents had settled when my father got out of the Navy. So I had gone there as a child, I had gone there as a youth, I'd gone there partly as an adult and gone there several times throughout visiting my my parents throughout my career I would go home for vacation and I would go to church with them on Sunday so and this church back in those back in the days when we first got there back in the 60s it had a very good sized congregation but as they died off the congregation got smaller because us kids of those parents we didn't stay in that area we went to the four corners of the earth so to speak so the uh, older the congregation got, the less in numbers it was. So I was standing there. I was a CW2 at the time. I was standing there in my uniform. My sons that visited me while I was in Korea, they were standing there with me. I was there with my mom, and we had already done the memorial service. So we did a little reception line at the back of the church where everybody came and talked to me. Now, I'm foot, five foot nine. Good size, average size male, supposedly. I might be a little taller now after a couple generations, but this man who I knew back in the days of the 60s, probably standing about five foot four, five foot three at this time. He walks up to me and he's, you know, 
eyeballing the, the uniform because you can tell who was a former military member and who wasn't. Hello, Snickers. Snickers has come up from downstairs. You gonna come closer so I can pick you up? Okay, I gotta get him. Yeah, you can come up here. Say hello to everybody. No, you're supposed to look at the camera. There you go. Ah, so this little man with his wife was there. I'm, he was like, he introduced himself, or my mother might have reintroduced him, because I've forgotten most of these people that my parents were in the congregation with. Because throughout my career, my mom would say, remember so-and-so from church? And I'd be like, no. Well, they died. <laughs> but, so he, like, like I said, he's eyeballing my furniture, or my, no, my uniform. <laughs> oh, wow. Take a drink, kitty cat. So he's looking me up and down, because this is the uh, dress greens, which had been around since, I think, the 50s or 60s. And he mentions his, yeah, I never wore that uniform. And I'm like, wow, really? And then he started talking to me, and he goes, he goes, yes, I was in the 5307th composite group. My eyes got big. He walked away, and I'm like, wow. And my oldest son goes, what? I said, well, the 5307 is modern day are the 75th Rangers. I said, but back in his day, he just said he was part of Merle's Marauders. Now, there's only about 3,000 of those guys that actually served. So I got to meet one of the original Rangers, so to speak, from World War II. Five foot three, how he survived the jungle. Iron will is all I gotta say. And I and I went on and I'm like, yeah, those guys suffered 100% casualties. Well, my oldest son looked at me and he says, Dad, if they're 100% casualties, why is he alive? I, and then my other son piped in, he goes, brother, just because there's 100% casualties doesn't mean they're all shot and killed. And I said, no, these guys were sick, they had, you know, Berry, berry. They had dysentery. They had malaria. They had diarrhea. But they kept going on and on and on, and they kept going beyond what was expected of them because they were totally exhausted by the time that they uh, did their last battle. And from what I've read, it was like months before these guys had the strength again to even probably get shipped out to other units to become replacements from other torn up units or not. So I was just amazed that I actually met one of the original 3,000 members of Merle's Marauders because I don't remember how many of them were actually killed during the campaign and probably died of their wounds. I would probably say a good maybe 25% that might be too high because everybody looks at these casualty figures and you think that, oh my God, but you got to realize when you say that you got 50 dead in a combat action, normal, you, you times that by three and that gives you how many guys got wounded. But due to the advanced medicines that we've had, a lot of those wounded get to survive, so therefore they don't become uh, mortally wounded, as the term is said, that they died of their wounds later on. Uh, I think I'm gonna wrap up Korea next week. I really don't know. I had a thought of what I was gonna talk about today besides my kids coming to visit and I even botched that story up a little bit. But yeah, I'm running out of things to talk about for Korea, I do believe. Seems like my warrant officer years are just gonna fly by these next several videos. I don't know, we'll see. But I think at the, towards the end, of my career talk, I'm going to talk about specific subjects because there's some things that I should probably talk about that people should contemplate going through their military career. And I just got news that one of my nephews is thinking about joining the Army this September. So we will see. So, Chief out, second ID, not going to say it. <laughs> Freedom is not free.